guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shelly. I'm a second grade teacher in Northern California. And today I just picked up the camera and I'm gonna walk you through a day in my life. My favorite type of videos to film. Normally when we're in the classroom, they're a lot more eventful because I show you lessons and activities and all the fun stuff. But we are still 100% distant here in California. We are teaching 100% on Zoom. So for today's vlog, I'm gonna catch up to speed, show you what we've been doing, share some tips and tricks that I've learned in the distant world in case you're still there or you're hybrid. They keep telling us that hybrid is on the horizon, so who knows, but fingers crossed. I just want kids in the classroom. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not really sure what footage I put together for the beginning of this video. I picked up my camera in the morning and was like, let's just show them snippets of what I do in the morning. My morning routine is totally botched since being pregnant. Oh yeah, if you haven't seen that part, um, I am currently 16 weeks pregnant with our second son and have a 12 month old, so life is crazy. On top of this year being a dumpster fire in general, having to navigate distance learning while being pregnant is an additional challenge. It's obviously a blessing, but this pregnancy is a little bit trickier just in terms of headaches and nausea and stuff, so it's been a little bit trickier, but we're making it through. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, starting to feel a little bit better, so yeah. That's that. When we do return, we have AB cohorts, so I get half my class Monday, Tuesday, the other half Thursday, Friday. I only have one kid who's opting to stay home for distance learning, which is crazy, and I don't know how to wrap my head around that, but um, it is what it is. The fact that I get all of them, most of them, 99% of them is amazing. All right, today's Friday. Happy Friday. So we are wrapping up our money unit which has been really fun. It would have been 10 times more fun in the classroom, but I did what I could to make it fun online. So today we're gonna play a game to review. It's called The Unfair Game. I found it because I was desperately Googling games to play via Zoom, and this one popped up, and I tweaked it to kind of fit our needs, so I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so that's what we're gonna do this morning. And then this afternoon, we are going to be doing a science experiment, but it's just me doing the demo because Zoom. So that's what's gonna be going on this afternoon. And then in between Zooms, I'm gonna be prepping and getting some stuff ready. And that's what I wanna show you, um, some of the like tips and tricks that I've learned. So now that my arm is officially numb, let me show you this game. Here's a fun little pan in my room. This is literally what I walked into today. When I am done Zooming at the end of the day, I bounce. <laughs> I do not take the time to put this back together. Actually, that's what I'll do first. I'll just kind of tidy up a bit, get organized and then I will show you the game. This is called the unfair game. Now I would play this a little bit differently in my classroom, but it totally works on Zoom. So basically I split the kids into two groups and unfortunately the easiest way to do that on Zoom and keep track of it all is girls boys or odds evens or something like that. A really easy split that the kids can also keep track of. So we have two teams and then we have a question board. So I have one through 10. So they select one of the 10 questions. Now after they select a question, before I show them the question, I ask them, do you wanna keep the points or do you want to give them away? So essentially each question is associated with a point value. Some are positive and some are negative. They have no idea. So sometimes the questions are worth plus five points. Sometimes they're worth, worth minus three points. So I ask them, do you wanna keep the points for yourself or do you wanna give them to the other team? And they scream and ch talk about it. I give them five seconds to figure it out. I call on one person, I say, what do you wanna do? So let's say they choose to keep the points. So I show them the question. If they get the question right, whatever choice they made, they get to do. So let's say they chose to keep the points, they got the question right. I then reveal the, the point value and then they get those points. Sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. And all but like two of my kids are totally fine with the fact that it is completely unfair. It's called the unfair game for a reason. There's no strategy, it's all luck. They never know how much the questions are gonna be worth, um, but it keeps them on the edge of their seat. It stresses them out just enough to be engaged, but they still love it. Um, we have the conversations of winning and losing, and it's just a game, this is all for fun. Um, We've only played it once and it worked really, really well. So yeah, it's something that I found that I can do via Zoom. If we come back to the classroom, I can transition it in here if they still wanna play it. Um, but that's what we're gonna be doing this morning and hopefully it's a good time. Also, do you notice I have new coffee? Did you see in the beginning when I was pouring my coffee? Um, 
life started happening, toddlers started happening, and then I forgot that I made coffee, left the house without even having a sip of that coffee. Um, so here we are. Cheers. Okay. I only have 15 minutes before I start my timer. My Zooms technically start at 9, but I like start them at 10.50 and let the kids kind of come in and I do attendance and they chat and stuff. So I only have about 15 minutes before they come on and I need to get our morning message ready. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go for now, but I'll pick you back up at 10 o'clock when our Zoom ends. Fill you in on a couple other things. We'll set up our science experiment and it'll be good. It'll be a fun Friday. Hey guys, so the morning went really well. The unfair game is always such a hit. Like there's always a couple kids that get really frustrated. And then the next question, they like get eight points or they pass their points to the girls and they lose eight points. I mean, the game changes so fast. So like to see the up and down of emotions is honestly hysterical, but it was really fun. Um, I know I was talking and my camera died. So I had to run home, get my batteries. Ended up running 500 more errands, including getting the things I need for my science experiment. Anyway, back in the classroom. Um, I need to sit down and plan a couple things for next week. There are just some things that I always get done ahead of time. And since it's Friday, you get to see that little snippet of my day. I also promised some tips and tricks, especially if you're still in the distance realm, which I feel like we all are in some fashion or another. So we all know and love Teachers Pay Teachers, TPT. If you don't know Teachers Pay Teachers, are you okay? I need to help you. It'll be linked down below. It's incredible. Um, I've used it this year more than ever for a couple of reasons. One, a uh, new grade level, global pandemic, really, really leaning on any and all resources I can find. And number two, um, my principal actually purchased us a site TPT license, which means we're allocated a certain amount of resources that we can download for free because he purchased the license. Anyway, I have been hot and heavy on TPT this year. And some of the coolest news ever is Teachers Pay Teachers came out with this easel feature, which essentially allows you to digitize TPT products. Now, not everything that you've ever purchased on TPT or will purchase has this like feature. Sorry, I'm looking at my screen because I'm looking at uh, an activity that I'm gonna be assigning. Anyway, so basically this easel feature, if it's embedded in a product, digitizes the product for you. So when you purchase it, it is essentially ready to go and upload into Google Classroom. And the best part is, is you can edit it, tweak it, and pretty much change it however you want to fit the needs of your kiddos. So I thought it would be fun to show you what I'm going to be doing. This is something that we are just starting. Um, I'm gonna be assigning like reading passages because I really don't have a good amount of assessment in terms of um, reading comprehension. So I purchased this product from Teachers Pay Teachers and it is an easel activity as well. So. I can digitize it. I think the easiest way to do this is to show you my computer screen um, and show you what I'm doing and then just do a voiceover. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this is the guided reading passages that I have created. So up here in the top right corner, you can see it says open in easel, which means it's compatible with easel. And then when you open the activity, you'll be able to see how it is digitized and I'm gonna show you how I'm going to edit it. So I'm only going to select or assign one of these passages. So what I can do is I can edit the pages and basically that allows me to go through and remove any of the pages that I don't want to assign, which is incredible, especially for a product like this. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to find the article that I want to assign this week and basically just delete all of the other pages. Okay, so now you can see I only have the three pages that I want my kiddos to see and already built in are text boxes that the kids can enter in. The only ones that are missing are for the multiple choice. So in a minute, you're going to see me go back and add that. But the um, short answer, it's all already done for you, which is great. So now I'm going to come back to this multiple choice page and I'm just going to insert an answer box. So you literally just click and click and then boom you can have them enter anything anywhere which is amazing all right so i'm just going to speed this up i'm going to add boxes to all of these questions and then these short answers i like the way they look so after you're all set you click on preview which is what the kids will see so you can just double check and make sure everything looks the way that you want so after you click through all of your pages you just assign and review so once you're in the assign and review window, this is where you can assign it directly to Google Classroom or it can generate a link 
So when you're ready to go, you're just gonna go up to the top right and click assign. We use Google Classroom, so I would just do Google Classroom, but there's also a copy link you can select. So did you see how easy that is? Like this is going to make distance learning and especially when we go hybrid so much easier. So essentially, once you assign it to Google Classroom or share the link or whatever, the kids just need to have, I believe, a Gmail account in order to access it or some sort of email address. Don't quote me on that. Um, but then they just click on the link, they complete it, and then you can go back in and see all of their responses. So I'm like super fired up about this because like I said, I have used TPT more this year than ever. And I went through and looked at all of the products that I've purchased. And a lot of the ones that I've already purchased have now embedded this easel feature. So I can just digitally assign them through TPT. It's incredible. Also, what you can do is if you already have PDFs or assignments and things digitally that you want to um, digitize for your kids, you can just upload your own PDFs through your TPT account and digitize it and assign it. It's, it's amazing. So if you have a TPT account, go check it out, Easel. If you don't have a TPT account, go create one and then go check it out. I'll go ahead and link down below information about Easel. I will also link down below that resource if you're interested um, and other things I can find about it. It's incredible and it's what I will be using to digitize things from now on. Okay, so most of my planning is done. I only have about 25 minutes to set up this science experiment. Um, essentially, we're talking about water and water erosion. And last week we did an experiment very, very similarly to the one I'm gonna show you um, just to see how water can erode land. And today we are going to be creating apparatuses, if you will, that will stop the erosion from happening. Ideally, we'd be in a classroom and they could create their own, but we're gonna try this over Zoom. Don't know how it's gonna go, to be very honest with you, but we will see. I need to stop talking to you. I'm gonna set it all up and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so here's the setup. So this is what we did last time, except we made a much bigger landmass. Water goes in here and it drips and this slowly erodes. So today we have toothpicks, cotton balls, foil, and paper towels, and they're going to brainstorm how we can make some sort of structure that's going to stop the erosion from happening. So we're gonna see how this goes. Hopefully it's okay. My cornmeal is a little bit funky. I had to remake one because it just got destroyed, but oh well. So here we go. I'm going to set the water up and then we are going to go ahead and start this Zoom. Maybe put cotton balls here. I wonder what I can do with cotton balls. I wonder what you could do with a cotton ball. Wait, maybe we could put cotton balls on the bottom so it catches the water. Like right there? Yeah. All right, here we go. Because you're leaning back. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Can you see what's happening? All right, so we are all finished. This was our first uh, attempt fail, but our second attempt was much more successful. They decided well, we need to build a barrier, an absorbing barrier around the outside. So it was not ideal over Zoom, but we got it done. Which I feel like should be the motto of this entire school year. It wasn't the best, but we got it done. All right, it is 1.30 on Friday. Um, normally I Zoom until two o'clock, but Fridays we are done 30 minutes early because I don't do small groups on Fridays. So I try to be out of here by 2, 2.30 so I can go pick up my son. Now on Fridays, I get our week at a glance ready for the following week. So I'm gonna show you what I send to parents every Friday for the following week as well as a weekly email. Um, I'm gonna make this week at a glance and then I will show you what it looks like. Um, and then we will clean this classroom and get the heck out of Dodge. All right, so this is what it looks like. Sorry if it's hard for you to see, but basically I just created this on PowerPoint. And by now I'm in such a groove to where I just go in and tweak things um, and it doesn't take me very long. And then at the bottom I have some announcements. So this is what I will send to parents in a PDF in our weekly email and it's, seeming to work very well for parents and helping everyone stay organized. Okie dokie, everybody. I am burnt out. Usually by the end of the day, I'm staring at a computer for so long um, that my head starts to hurt. But add 
pregnancy headaches on top of that and my brain is just like throbbing however before i leave on fridays this is like the one time that i will clean ahead of time and because it's only 150 and i have some time um so i'm going to show you my area and let you know what i'm going to do this doesn't actually look so bad but i'm just going to get it organized and set up for monday and then I'm gonna put my desks back in order. I am just really gonna toss all of this because the cornmeal can't really be used. <laughs> my shoes. Um, these are invitations for something else that I brought in, paper I need to put away, just like tables and little stuff. So I'm just gonna put you guys like over here and putts around um, and then we'll get out of here. are ready to go for next week this just helps my brain on a monday i come in feeling much more clear-headed and not so overwhelmed and i'm literally out of breath from this baby look at this so crazy how fast it goes um but also how slow okay so i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog if you did give it a thumbs up make sure you subscribe make sure you follow me on instagram I know the vlogs have been few and far between and uneventful because this school year sucks. <laughs> I mean, I have an amazing class and I love second grade, but just like the logistics of this year suck. So stay tuned. We should be transitioning back to hybrid shortly. And I want to document that whole process because that's going to be a whole nother issue, but also so exciting. Anyway, I'm going to end this vlog here. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.